Thank you for joining me for this video. Today we're going to look at these dreams of two moons that are concurrent with the rapture of the church. Is this biblical? Does this appear anywhere in the Bible where there's two moons seen? I think there is something biblical that we can point to, and I want to share that with you today. Before we begin, let's start with the good news. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, anyone, everyone on this earth who believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Acts 16, 30-31. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This is a priceless gift that God offers to us without merit on our part, or payment on our part. All that's required is our belief. We get eternal life, we get rewards we cannot imagine, and the only thing is our belief that's required. So I encourage you, if you have not already, to make your decision to believe on Jesus Christ as one with the Father, as the sacrifice that paid for our sins, as raised from the dead today. And you will be saved and you will live forever. We're not promised another day, so make that decision today. Okay, so these two moon dreams, what could this be? Well, let's look at what happens when the rapture happens. We're going to look at Revelation 6. This is the sixth seal of Revelation. It starts at Revelation 6.12. It says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So we're, here we have one moon that's blood red. The sun is black. Of course, with a blood red moon, you most likely have the sun set already, so it would be dark. Uh, there could be other supernatural reasons why it becomes black. We'll continue on Revelation 6.13, because there's more here we'll see as we're trying to see what the second moon is that is appearing in the dreams. Revelation 6.13 And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, pay attention to that, the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves, check that, hold on to that, in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Revelation 6.16 And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? All right, so what could this second moon be? I don't see any second moon at all in the description here, Revelation 6.12 through 17. I think what it may be is Zion appearing to everyone on earth in the sky. Now, let's look at uh, the book of Psalms, Psalm 48. Let's read that. 48.1, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings, remember the kings from Revelation 6, were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it. They're seeing Zion. Are they seeing Zion on the sides of the north, in the sky, next to the moon, a second moon? They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away, so they're, they're, they're hiding. Psalm 48, 6, Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. So this uh, appears that this could be happening the same time as the moon becoming blood red. So how big is Zion, and what it might, might it look like if it's visible in the sky? Revelation 21 Verse 16 gives us that answer. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth of the height of it are equal. So if that's the diameter of a circle, that'd be 1,500 miles across. The moon is 2,200 approximately miles across. So depending on how close or far away Zion is relative to the moon, could appear larger or smaller than the moon. Same distance, it'd be slightly smaller. If it's much closer, like half the distance, it'd be much bigger looking. 
So here is a city that's in the sides of the north that the kings of the earth see that they run away from in fear. Now, does this anything give us that the city appears the same time as um, the blood moon? Well, let's look in Isaiah. This is Isaiah 24, I believe. Yeah, here we go. So we have a lot of language here. The last part of Isaiah 24, that's like the day of the Lord language and the seal six language. And it culminates here in Isaiah 24, 23. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. So when Christ appears it's for his glory, when the rapture occurs, um, the moon is turned to red, turned blood red. It's confounded. The sun is ashamed. It's black like sackcloth. And then the Lord of hosts is reigning in Mount Zion. So this could very well be what these dreams are about. Uh, a lot of people describe the second moon as not natural looking. So let's take a walk through the Bible of Zion. And what is it? Um, it's got a lot of bad reputation as Zionistic being a bad thing. But let's just look at the Bible and the, what the Bible is describing Zion as. So we're going to come here to the King James Version, starting here, and just look through some passages that I had marked. In Genesis 19, um, this is when Lot is fleeing from Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know that Jesus Christ said it will be like the days of Lot when the end comes. Genesis 19.17, And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. Zion is the mountain of God. That's where we're going to escape to on that day. All right, let's go on here. Exodus 15.13, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength into thy holy habitation. Sounds like the rapture. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. 1 Samuel 7, 1. And the men of kirgath jath Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill, and sanctified Eliezer, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. A lot of rapture picture there. Psalm 2, 6, Ye yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Psalm 24, 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Psalm 48, 1, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, and the mountain of his holiness. Psalm 52, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Psalm seventy-eight, fifty-four, And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to this mountain, which his, which his right hand had purchased. Psalm seventy-eight, sixty-eight, But choose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. Psalm 87, The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Isaiah 2, 2, Okay, here's a last day's reference. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. So Zion should appear in the last days. Isaiah eleven six. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 13, 2, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Isaiah 14, 13, For thou hast said, this is Satan, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Isaiah 24, 23, we looked at 
Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Isaiah 26, 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Isaiah 27, 13. Again, a last day's reference, or the day of the Lord reference. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Syria, and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain, holy mount at Jerusalem. Isaiah 28.16 Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So this is Zion, this is Jesus, and those who believe being raptured. Isaiah 29.8 It shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath an appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Zion. Isaiah 30.19 for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Isaiah thirty twenty nine, Ye shall have a song, as in the night, when the holy solemnity is kept, and the gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself with the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. Isaiah 31, nine, And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, saith the Lord whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. So here's the fear of the kings of the earth, and they see Zion. Isaiah 34, 8, and here's another day of the Lord reference. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Isaiah 49, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, that bring us good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Isaiah 51, 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Isaiah 52, 8. Thy watchmen, there's plenty of watchmen lifting up the voice right now, shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So Zion appears when the rapture happens. Isaiah 56, 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Isaiah fifty seven thirteen, When thou criest, that thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. Isaiah sixty fourteen. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 65, 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Isaiah 65, 25, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. 
Isaiah 66, 20. And they shall bring all the, your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering and a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Jeremiah 4, 6, set up the standard, again, Jesus Christ, towards Zion. Retire, stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. So concurrent with the day of the Lord and Zion's appearing is a great destruction. Jeremiah eight nineteen. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? It continues on here, 820, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, we are not saved. So, <clears throat> for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt, I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold upon me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician in there? There, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? So these are the left behind. These are the foolish virgins who did not believe. These are the daughters of Jerusalem, unfortunately. Um, you definitely want to be a daughter of Zion. You want to be one of the wise virgins who has oil in their lamps, who is, of course, the oil is Jesus Christ, those who believe. Okay, continuing on from here. Jeremiah 31, 6, For there shall be a day, a day, the day of the Lord, that the watchmen, who are crying for this day coming, upon Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion. Zion appears in the sky, and we go up to her, unto the Lord our God. Jeremiah 55, and these are the foolish virgins, asking how to get there now. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. The perpetual covenant is the, um, the covenant with many. This is the great multitude. And I did a video on that recently. Uh, just look for a video called Covenant. Jeremiah 50, 28, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon. So Babylon's destroyed when Zion appears because those who flee, flee to Zion. Out of the land of Babylon declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Daniel prayed about Zion. And whilst I was speaking, Daniel 9, 20, and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Joel, Joel, this famous passage in Joel speaking of Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. Joel 2.3 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Joel 3.17 So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. Obad, Obadiah uh, one sixteen. Oh, and let's start with 115, for it's the day of the Lord reference here. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Micah 4.1, again the last day's reference. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, again a reference back to Isaiah, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. Then... I think that was the last Old Testament reference. Oh no, here it's a couple more. Okay, so Zephaniah three eleven, In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. 
For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Zechariah 1.14 So the angel that commanded, communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. Zechariah 1.17 Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall be yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Zechariah 2.7 Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Zechariah 2.13 Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Zechariah 8.2 Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Zechariah 3, Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Now we come to the New Testament. And here is the transfiguration in Matthew 17.1. After six days, after six thousand years, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into in a high mountain apart. Mark 9, 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, and James, and John, and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And Luke nine twenty eight. And it came to pass about in the eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. All right, now let's look at Galatians. This is a really interesting tie-in to Zion. And we'll see the Revelation 12 sign here in a second and maybe another take on that Revelation 12 sign in light of these uh, dreams and in light of all we see about how Zion appears at the end. Galatians 4.24 um, which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. This is the covenant with death. Galatians 4.24, For this Agar is, in Mount, is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children, the children, the daughters of Jerusalem, the five foolish virgins. Galatians 4.26, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is, and this is important, the mother of us all. So this is Zion. This is the heavenly Jerusalem. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So here's the new covenant, the covenant with many, God's promise of a great multitude. This is the heavenly Jerusalem in, in Galatians 4.26. Now, let's look into Hebrews 11:16. But now they desire a better country, that is, in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Hebrews 12:22. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Galatians 3:12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. How do you become an overcomer? Um, this is the victory that overcometh, even our faith, belief, faith, that's what gets us to heaven. The old covenant, the covenant with death, the covenant... Um, with the law that was delivered at Mount Sinai, um, that's old, that's gone. The covenant that's perpetual, that's with the many, that was actually before the covenant with death, um, is belief in Jesus Christ as our Savior. All right. Um, now, in light of what we've seen and how Jerusalem appears, let's look at Revelation 12, 1 in a new light. And there appeared a great wonder in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, 
and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So this woman could be Zion, could also be Virgo, as the Revelation 12 sign that we saw in 923-2017 was. But if it's Zion, we know that Zion is the mother of us all, and Zion gives birth to us from, um, from Hebrews. The woman clothed with the sun, clothed with God, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Jesus is the king of Israel. So upon her head, Jesus is in uh, Zion. And it could also be uh, Leo, of course. Very interesting if that Revelation 12 sign is, the great wonder in heaven is the appearance of Zion. So what appears to be like two moons, one of them blood red, the day of the Lord. Revelation 14, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Revelation 21, 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And finally, Revelation twenty one twenty three, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did light it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. This is Jerusalem. And Revelation twenty one sixteen, <clears throat> And the city lie the four square, and the lake is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, and twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So again, that's 1,500 miles. A little bit smaller than the moon, not much. So if it appears in the sky closer than the moon, it would be bigger. So here's a potential explanation of what dreams of two moons in the sky might be pointing to. Definitely appears that when it appears, it's the day of the Lord, and therefore the rapture happens. So, I hope you found this study interesting. Uh, what's most important of anything is that you believe on Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You will have eternal life, riches you can't, can't even imagine for eternity. Spend it with our God. And uh, I hope that you made that decision. And uh, I hope God shines his face upon you and keeps you between now and the coming of Zion. Amen.